Um, to be real truthful with you guys, uh, Play Tectonics, uh, as far as the AP exam goes, what they'll do is they're, they'll ask you um, about typically where locations are. This place in Hawaii or Africa or whatever, what's going on tectonically? That's the most common question. Um, there are some FRQs where they've asked about like the tsunami that happened in in Indonesia, for example. Like what set that up? And so I'm going to go into that a little bit. Um, but in college, I took a class on plate tectonics, like just plate tectonics. And so I'm going to do that in 10 minutes. And I'm not going to do it justice like if we were in geology. But I'm going to try to do what you need for AP environmental. Um, so the theory of continental drift is that the continents, um, and I'll go a little bit bigger for a second so it'll move because it's a cartoon, uh, I think. There. And so it's the theory that the plates uh, move around and um, that's kind of where we had the whole idea of Pangea. Uh, what people don't know, if you watch this little movie, it's pretty interesting. There's Pangea, right, happening. Um, and it splits apart and there's current day. Uh, there's been other supercontinents before Pangea. There was uh, one named Rod Rodinia. Um, it's a uh, it's a cycle, and so we'll run back into the other side uh, and make this thing called Amasia, which sounds really lame. Oh, it's going to be Amasia. Amazing. Amasia. I don't know. Uh, but they've already like named it, even though we'll be long gone and dead by then. Um, so there's the continental drift idea, uh, and Alfred Wegener was the first person to propose that. Um, he did that in the early 19. Hundreds, and unfortunately, he had no mechanism for it. Like he said, "Oh, look, the fossils match up, and the rocks match up, and there were mountain ranges that match up, and <clears throat> there was all this uh, geologic evidence in the early 1900s." But no one knew about plate tectonics, and so he basically was <laughs> um, kind of ridiculed because there was no mechanism for giant slabs of earth to move around. No one knew about the mantle convection. That's what I had taken and done with the oil in the pan and showed you guys how the plates move around. Um, so the, the rocks formation match across oceans, uh, mountain ranges uh, match, the fossil records match across um, the continents. Um, and so I don't know if y'all remember me telling you, I told you that uh, in India was down by Antarctica and it hauled butt up through the ocean and ran into Asia and it and certainly did that. And so there India, the subcontinent of India was its own little continent. And so you can tell like how interested I am in this and how I'm not telling you everything, right? Can you see it in my face? It makes me sad. Um, so anyway, there's a close up of more of the um, fossils and I actually have a really cool documentary that shows all these little uh, like Lystrosaurus. Uh, he's, they're like little of uh, the cows of the uh, um, days of Pangea. They were just everywhere. Um, there's other climatic um, evidence. Um, there's uh, ferns from swamps in Antarctica. And so we know that the temperature was warmer. Um, and like the parking lot rock, well, you know, there's the car where you park your car, there's a giant rock. That was, um, that's um, coral reef from when we were down by the equator in Pangea. So, and we were under the ocean, warm, equatorial. So that's little seashells all compacted together by the, where you park. Yeah, that rock. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so current day, we have this theory called plate tectonics. <laughs> Cell theory is a theory. Plate tectonics is a theory. Evolution is a theory. Theory is a big word. Um, don't want to get me off on that soapbox. Uh, but anyway, these plates move around. And we honestly knew, we went to the moon like human beings went to the moon before um, the idea that mantle convection and plate tectonics, we knew that. We, we went to the moon before we understood how our plates move. And so the theory of plate tectonics was published in the late 60s and we went to the moon in 1969. So um, you know more right now than about how plates move around in five minutes than you know, people did 50 years ago, which is really interesting. It wasn't until World War II when we had um, all the submarines for the um, the war efforts and how they had taken soundings of the bottom of the seafloor and also magnetism readings that we realized that um, these move. And so you have these plates, they move around, they get crushed. There's 15 major ones, sometimes people say 12, um, but there they are. And then um, 
<laughs> There's some Spanish for you. <laughs> that was the best picture I could find. So most volcanoes and earthquakes happen at plate boundaries. And that's because um, in the middle of plates, there's no movement, there's nothing, uh, there's no interactions going on that would cause something like that. And so this is where you're going to take your foldable, I mean, not, it's not foldable, but take your piece of paper. We're going to draw some notes. And so the first um, section at the top of your paper is divergent plate boundary. And so what we're going to do is you're going to draw. And um, what I can do with, with you, it might be easier instead of you trying to, y'all know how good I am at drawing, right? But I'm going to do my best. I think it would be easier for me to draw it with you and... Goodbye, incorrect Lewis structure. Um, had somebody last period that was like, I already know how to draw the Lewis structure of carbonate. Okay, no. Um, so, anyway, let's go ahead and I'm going to give you some information about divergent plate boundaries. Um, going to have a plate over here. Whee! So, this is my continental plate. And it's going to go into the ocean here. I'm going to draw a little mountain. In the middle of the mountains, this mountain is a little taller than it actually is. I'm going to have a little valley. Then I'm going to draw another mountain. And then I'm going to come up and draw my crest. Now, what's happening here um, is I'm going to have some magma coming up from the mantle. And the magma is going to be coming out here. And so... What's happening is, um, if we think about those convection cells in the mantle, this would be at a convection cell where, um, kind of draw this for you. If these plates were coming up and they were driven by these convection cells mm. apart. And so magma is going to come up where they're moving apart. And so a couple things you need to be aware of. This little valley right here, that's called the rift valley. And rift means to tear, and that's where the earth is getting torn apart there. Um, so there's a little valley. And notice um, in my diagram, on either side of the valley, there's a little mountain. Those mountains are called a mid-ocean ridge. And those mid-ocean ridges, so this guy, these mountains are called mid-ocean ridges. And if we rewind time 300 million years ago, this is a continent over here. So this is continental crust, continental crust, and I'll write the whole word over here. I have some more continental crust. If you rewind time, those continents would be together, and this magma coming up is what pushed them apart. And so on both sides of this mid-ocean ridge, the mid-ocean ridge is about, it's in the middle of the ocean or close to the middle. Um, it is what drove the continents apart. So if you have a supercontinent like Pangaea, what happens is the mantle gets overheated, and then um, it will actually crack open the crust and move it apart as that hot magma comes up. And this is a divergent plate boundary here. Um, I'm going to let you get this down. I'm going to give you a couple more pieces of information. Yes, sir. So, so, so. No, you're okay. No, um, Melanie just brought them back last period. There's three right there. Yeah. I don't know if the other... Well, the door's locked, so I didn't know. Okay. The, uh, that door that you keep them in is locked. So. Oh, here you go. Um, okay. So there's two more in that door, and... If you want to go get that. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. That's fine. That's fine. All right, so a uh, couple things. Notice in my diagram that um, the continental crust is very thick and um, the oceanic crust is pretty thin. And so this is your oceanic crust. And if I draw this in, Gonna be very thin. Okay, and my continental crust is actually quite thick. So your continental crust may be 30 miles thick, your oceanic crust may be 3 miles thick. Okay, 
And that's why, drum roll please, the ocean is a hole in the ground. Because the oceanic crust is real thin. The continental crust is real thin, so you got a hole in the ground. When it rains, water goes downhill. That's why you have the ocean. Okay, we thought about that. Tomorrow, um, after we get our lab going, I'll take you outside. And this is like, what I do is I take people outside. And this is like sidewalk, like the white color concrete. It's thicker. And this is like the asphalt. It's actually a, a darker color and it's a lot thinner. So I'll take you outside and show that, that tomorrow. Um, so, anyway, how do you feel about that? And like I said, if I rewind time, these two continents would be together. And this is actually happening right now in Africa. And I'm ruining my like, lecture because it's in there. So your mid-ocean ridge is your mountains. Your roof valley is this valley in between there where the magma is coming out. Um, I will add a couple words maybe. No, that, we'll get to that when we get to the ocean. Just kidding. I'm going back to the other slide now. Okay, so if I zoom in on their uh, pictures here, um, you can see that the oceanic crust is thinner, the continental crust is thicker. Thank you so much. And there is my mid-ocean ridge. There's my rift valley. Um, and this is called seafloor spreading. Over time, you can imagine that those continents will move farther apart. Um, and so this is your magma, and this would be the upper mantle there. Um, so anyway, uh, that's what I just showed you guys. I think this makes a little cartoon, but I don't want to go back to the screen because then my stuff will shut down. Um, so this is actually happening right now in Africa, and it's already, um, y'all know the Red Sea right here, um, right here, that's already been torn apart by this. And so Africa now is getting split down through uh, Ethiopia, and this is Lake Victoria, pretty sure. I'll zoom in on that. I always second guess my geography, even though most of the time I'm there. So there's your Red Sea. It's already been split. And then that little lake right here, that's Lake Victoria. And so this is the East African. This is East Africa. This is the East African Rift Valley. And so this area in Ethiopia is very um, um, volcanic. It's very tectonically active. And they have beautiful coffee that I buy. That's delicious. Volcanic soil makes great coffee. Um, and it comes from Ethiopia. And I'm like, oh, that's because of the East African Rift Valley. And, you know, there's a divergent plate boundary. And that's why there's volcanoes. Nobody else, I don't think, in the whole world thinks about that when they buy their coffee. But I do. Um, so, anyway, let's go ahead and... Um, move on to convergent plate boundaries um, and so this is going to be where two plates move toward each other and so there's there is um, oceanic continental oceanic oceanic and continental continental so what we're going to do is we're going to draw three of these okay and that's why i told you to make that middle part bigger i'm going to get you to draw them side to side and so i'm going to try to do that on my paper for you let's see the first one i mean we can just honestly i think this is probably better than what i can do Here's your first one. So ocean continental, and I'll kind of zoom in for you. And there we go. So again, if you look, we have that very thin oceanic crust. The lithosphere is just the word for a plate. Lith means rock. Like the lith, y'all remember the lithosphere was the sink for, for carbon, the lithosphere was sink for phosphorus. This is the same word. It's the crust, all right? So the lithosphere, and so what we have here is we have, um, I'm going to do it this way, and I'm gonna, then I can draw on it. That looks good. All right, so if I were you, you're drawing your thin oceanic crust here. There's my oceanic crust. And um, going in and adding some labels to this, this right here, this area where that oceanic crust is going up underneath the continental crust, you have what's called a subduction zone. So that is a subduction zone. Subduction zone. And this very uh, wet uh, oceanic crust, as it goes down into the mantle, well, it's hot in the mantle. It's going to melt, and that hot magma is going to be less dense than the surrounding rock, and it's going to rise like a volcano. Dan, do you have a question? No. Okay. Sure. Okay, thanks. 
Um, so that's a subduction song, and you see here in the subduction song, you're going to have man, uh, magma coming up, and so I'm going to hop... Mm, highlight this magma. This magma is going to come up uh, because it's less than it's in the surrounding rock. And so what you're going to get is you're going to get a volcanic arc. So I don't know if you can see that word, but here is mountains, right? Mountains, 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 mountains. And this is a, uh, a, a, a mountain range of volcanic, volcanic arc. Um, it is important that we know where these are on Earth. Um, the last one was, you know, in the middle of the ocean and also, you know, the East African Rift Valley. But this happens, this is um, South America and North America. These are the East, excuse me, West Coast of those continents. So, y'all know Mount St. Helens, right? It erupted in the early 80s. This is why uh, off the coast of uh, Washington, Oregon, there's a subduction zone. And uh, all those beautiful mountains in Washington, Oregon that are just lovely, they're not mountains, they're volcanoes, okay? And so, this is the Andes Mountains. So, we have the Andes Mountains here. Um in South America, that would be your, um, you know, that whole eastern, excuse me, I keep saying these, western um, coastline of South America is just this volcanic mountain range. And so, um, yes? What's the red section? It's called the asthenosphere. Um, if you want to know, the asthenosphere the is the part of the mantle that does that moving. Um, that's on the rock shaped arrow, but... Um, but the asthenosphere is the upper mantle that is, it's like Play-Doh. It's kind of putty and soft, and it's hot, and it, and it flows. That's the part that would be like the oil carrying all this around. That's not going to be the AP exam, but if you wanted to know. Um, so you have your two plates coming together. Notice how thick, how much thicker the continental crust is compared to that very thin oceanic crust. And the oceanic crust is denser as well, and so it will get subducted. Subducted means go underneath. That's where I get my volcanoes. Yes, sir? Since the magma is less than in all the stone and um, uh, the lithosphere and everything that right. rises, uh, is it just surface tension that keeps all the water in the It has to do with the surrounding country rock, and so um, that and that's going to determine, for example, like um, Hawaii, um, that it doesn't have anything interfering with it erupting, and so this what ends up happening with these explosive um, eruptions like Mount St. Helens. Uh, that surrounding country rock is a very light, uh, not dense granite, like with the continent, uh, continental crust, and so it'll build up pressure and then it'll explode violently. And so that's kind of how you determine what kind of volcanic eruption you'll have by whatever kind of rock this is. Yes, ma'am? What were the examples again? I got the Andes Mountains. The Andes Mountains and then the um, the west coast of the United States. So your Mount Rainier, your Mount St. Helens. Like you should see Sierra Nevada Mountains, I guess, would be the way to do it. But um, there's several mountain ranges along the, the west coast. Um, so. Are y'all okay here? So that's your first kind of conversion. Um, so if we have ocean continent, we also have ocean, ocean, and we have ocean, uh, or excuse me, continent, continent. So moving on to the next slide. So with oceanic plates, when they collide, uh, one oceanic plate is going to go up underneath the other one. And oopsie, there we go. And so this happens when um, all the island arcs in Southeast Asia, Indonesia, Indonesia for example, Thailand, um, that whole ring of fire when you think of all the, um, the islands that are north of uh, Australia, those are all formed this way. This is also um, how um, Japan is formed. And so what you have here is you have... Please notice the width again, or the 
thickness. You have a very thin oceanic crust going up underneath another very thin piece of oceanic crust. And so what ends up happening here, still that, um, you have that subduction zone. So you have your subduction zone here. So that's one word, but I'm going to hyphenate it. Subduction zone. And we're going to have that line of volcanoes. And these volcanoes are going to be not a volcanic arc. They're going to be a, a, an island arc. And I have seen the word island arc on the AP exam. A volcanic arc, the other one. Yeah, and this is technically a, a volcanic island arc. So, um, excuse me while I piece my computer. Um, so this is a volcanic island arc, and I'll write that in for you. There we go. So a volcanic island arc. Let's see, volcanic island arc. And the biggest example of this is um, Japan. So Japan, Indonesia is another good example. If you can think of islands, uh, the Caribbean islands are formed this way. If you can think of islands out in the middle of nowhere for no reason, probably this is the issue. Okay, so Japan, Indonesia, um, and going back to Indonesia, um, when I take these two, um, I'm going to let you finish and I'll explain where tsunamis come from because you need to understand that, that phenomenon. This is, ocean, this is convergent ocean-ocean. So two plates that are both oceanic are coming together. And the older, colder oceanic crust will get subducted. And so you get your nice all, um, island arcs. And these island arcs are actually curved. Um, so an arc. Oh, the Aleutian Islands. That's a perfect example. Y'all know Hawaii, not Hawaii. Um, Alaska kind of looks like this, and then it has all these dots going out into the Pacific, and they're curved. That's a plate boundary, and that's where the Aleutian Islands have come from. So the Aleutian Islands are a good example of this. And then again, the Aleutian Islands are the... All right, the islands... That was really graceful. That, um... Your, your area is like the Bermuda Triangle for Rodney Pencils. Thank you so much. Um, so, anyway, um... What ends up happening... With this, let me kind of zoom in right here. I can. Um, with how tsunamis happen. And so that's really grainy. But right here, where this one oceanic plate, I can't draw on it, but where this one oceanic plate is going up underneath the other one, if you just take your hands and do this, kind of put your hands together. And if this is oceanic, oceanic, one's going to try to get subducted. And so it's going to start going down. Now, see how I, as I do this, there's like a natural V that forms in my hands. That's a trench. Like the Marianas Trench is formed in this kind of boundary. The Marianas Islands are right north of Japan. So anyway, and see I have this trench. And what's going to happen is this one that's trying to get subducted is going to get stuck. Stuck, stuck. You are your hands stuck? And so eventually it will move and this pop will pop up. And as it pops up like that, it will cause the ocean water above it to be disturbed. And that's where you get your tsunamis from. So the tsunami that happened in um, 2000 and 2010, or was it earlier than that? It happened around Christmas time. But um, what ended up happening, there was a massive earthquake. Um, and so uh, also the tsunami that happened with, that caused Fukushima, the power plant in Japan, to have problems. Same issue, um, but you have this subduction zone. The overriding plate, um, as that pressure builds up, uh, once the plates continue, uh, the energy is released and the plates do move again, uh, that upper upper plate is disturbed. And so... Um, that sets the ocean water um, moving, and that's where your tsunami comes from. So this is convergent ocean, ocean. Um, island arcs, this is giving you tsunamis. Um, and this is your oceanic trench right here. So here's your trench. Trench. Oh, that's right there. Trench. 
So this is, trench, trenches don't come from plates moving apart. People think that trenches come from plates moving apart, but that's where you get a rip out. Plates um, come together and give you a trench. So the deepest parts of the ocean are actually formed in this way, where you have subduction zone. And this trench is lining the entire ocean floor at this plate boundary. Yes, ma'am? Um, what were the examples? Uh, Japan, Indonesia, and the Aleutian Islands. And, you know, if I have two ocean plates come together, of course I would make an island arc. Aleutian, A-L-E-U-T-I-A-N. A-L-E-U-T-I-A-N. Hi, Phil. The next one's pretty straightforward. When two continental plates come together, guess what you make? Yeah, because you can't make an island because you're in the middle of the land, right? So, um, moving on to the next one. Excuse me while I clean up my mess here. Um, okay, so what ends up happening with these is, um, let me do it this other way. I have a lot of choices. Whoops. All right, so what ends up happening here, if you look before you start drawing, check this out. Um, you see that blue? That's the oceanic crust. And so um, I told you that, guys, that India used to be down by um, Antarctica, and as it moved through the ocean, it ended up uh, colliding with um, Europe. Oh, excuse me, not Europe. The Eurasian plate, I should say. And so uh, Asia. But <clears throat> the oceanic plate, like this was India, right? And this is Asia. Um, there was some... Uh, oceanic plate that's connected to that uh, Indian plate and so it got subducted but then after you run out of oceanic plate continental plate cannot be subducted it's like trying to push a big styrofoam uh, block into water it's going to pop right back up uh, continental crust is less dense and so it can't be subducted and so since it can't be subducted it ends up getting folded and twisted and contorted here and um, you make these folded mountains and so the Himalayas are obviously, you know, the most famous example. Um, you also have like the Alps. That's another good example. But um, in these areas, you don't have volcanoes because there's no, um, after that initial ocean plate gets subducted, there's nothing to go down and melt into the mantle. And so you just get this thickening of the continental crust. And so, um, Anyway, if you look here, um, have you ever heard of the Tibetan Plateau? Yeah, there's one. Okay, so on the back side, on the continental side of this, you'll have a high plateau. And with the case of the Himalayas, it's the Tibetan Plateau. So, anyway, um, this is convergent continent, continent, real straightforward. You don't have volcanoes here. You only just have um, typically really strong earthquakes. And so uh, when you have an earthquake in Pakistan, for example, which is right here beside the uh, Himalayas, sometimes um, when you have an earthquake in this part of the world, the Himalayas will actually grow by 20 feet. They'll get that much taller after the, the tension is released from the stress on the plates. It's pretty interesting. Um, so foot by foot, earthquake by earthquake, these are getting taller while erosion is breaking them down. So interesting, but yet too much information. Uh, anyway, so that, that's pretty straightforward. These are called folded mountains. I'll add that in case. Uh, and this is how the Appalachians were built. The Appalachians, they used to be taller than the Himalayas. They're just old as dirt, literally. Um, and so we formed the Appalachians when we collided with Europe and Africa um, in the events leading up to and forming Pangaea. So... Yeah, now they're just like little hills. And one day the Himalayas will be that way too. Okay, so how you feel? Pretty straightforward, right? Well, maybe. Alps. And these are just called folded mountains. And they're called folded mountains because those rocks will be folded. Have y'all ever driven down 41 and looked on the side of the road and there's like rocks that are kind of like tilted up and you can see the layers, but they're not flat? 
That's the roots of the Appalachians. Dun, dun, dun. Alps, is that the Appalachians? Uh, the Alps, like the Alps in Europe. Those are like the Swiss Alps. Is that ringing a bell? Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. Okay, so um, transform is really straightforward. The most common example of the um, the transform boundary is just um, and the plates. There's not a whole lot to draw, right? They just one moves this way and one moves that way. And so if you were drawing this. They slide past one another. The San Andreas is an example. Um, and then also, um, let me write that down. Oh, it's right here. So the San Andreas is an example. And also, these are common in the ocean floor. Ocean floor. And I'll talk about that ocean piece here in a second. But the San Andreas is, you know, the most common. It's kind of weird and an anomaly. Um, so what do you draw? You draw a little box with plates going the other way. There's nothing pretty to draw, I'm sorry. So the plates are sliding past one another. Your other, uh, your other pictures are beautiful and this is going to be a box of two arrows. There's nothing to this. So can't make, you can't make volcanoes here. Nothing is going into the mantle to melt. The only phenomenon you'll have is earthquakes. And so that's very common in places like California. There, uh, there's nothing, you can't make a mountain, nothing's colliding, you can't make a trench, nothing's conducting. Yes, ma'am? I have a stu stupid question. Is San Andreas and is that the California one? Yes, so, so here's California, and uh, if y'all want to draw like a better picture, it's making you sad, but yours looks lame, I mean, there. Um, so those are the three kinds of plate boundaries, and where... Um, one year, the AP exam started off with a world map, and it had, like, random dots in places. And um, it was like, what's happening here? So, um, I do want to tell you about hot spots. I don't, I feel like I put that in the PowerPoint. I have asked questions about that before. Um, let me see what I have here. You guys got this one? Okay. What is this one called? Transform. The middle one. So, okay, you got it. Oh, you're good. Y'all know I heard you. Yeah. Um, okay, so do you have some room beside, uh, do you have some room beside transform? You probably do, right? Let's do hot spots real quick. And so, a hot spot. And so what you'll have is you'll have a, a mantle plume. It'll be, this is called a plume. And it'll just be a random magma coming, shooting up straight from the, almost from the Earth's core, not at a plate boundary, just in the middle of nowhere. So a plume of magma. And um, in this case, we actually have Hawaii. And there's the ocean. And there's no plate boundary. It's just a plume of magma, and it'll form volcanoes and some minor earthquakes. This is also, um, if it's not in the ocean, this is there's one of these underneath Yellowstone, and this is also where the Galapagos come came from. Did y'all's Galapa? Um, did y'all's biology teacher show you that real good documentary about the Galapagos Islands? Yeah. yeah. And so, no. Okay. Well, sorry. Don't have time to do that. But I'll show you. I'll show you this real quick in the one ball fire. So that's good. Right? Yeah. Yay! So uh, the Galapagos and Hawaii both. What you have is you. Oh, these are island chains. Hot spots make islands. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, these island chains versus an arc. These aren't going to be arched because they're not at a plate boundary. Um, I feel and compelled to put my hair up and put on safety goggles. I've been teaching chemistry too long. Uh, in geology labs, you just like the safety goggles, the safety gear is nothing. 
just come in and touch stuff doesn't matter um okay so this is your mantle plume and it is not a plate boundary so like the glaucus song not a plate boundary why not a plate boundary Yellowstone, not on a plate boundary, but this is where like old fish will come from. So if I take this, plates move, right? Plates move, the hot spot stays in the same place. And so what happens, there's a fine line before you make a mess. Oh, don't touch. I meant to move the paper. And so the plate, the paper moves over the hot spot, and that's where you get Hawaii. If you ever go to Hawaii, this wasn't marshmallows, this was. Um, if you ever go to Hawaii, um, there's a, one island that's really active, and the other ones are dormant, and you can you don't have to worry about it. So, like, whichever one is under the plume at that point, that's the one that'll be growing, and these older ones will be shrinking. And so, um, have you seen that little video where it's like, I love you. One person shook his head. So that's what we're talking about from the beginning of that movie. I should show you that. Do you think there are people following me? Hannah? Inside out? Not moving? Well, like there was a, at the beginning, there was a cartoon. Oh, with the TV. Yeah. So that's a hot spot. And so, like, he was, that uh, one volcano was waiting on somebody to love him, but he was really just waiting on the hot spot, the plate to move out of the hot spot. Learning yes. stuff just ruins your life. And then, like, he eroded away as she was growing, and then you're still. Yeah. Yeah. And then they both came out. Do you want me to look for it? Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's better than watching TV, right? Yeah, especially since I feel really nauseous today. Fair enough. I was, so I was planning on asking the Oh, wow, okay. That bad. I got out of bed this year. I hey, no worries. All right, let me turn the video off. Well, no, I mean, I guess we could leave it going. Nobody's going to watch this. Just watch it just to spite me. I'm going to watch it anyway. Come on, Internet. So finish your little pictures, and I'll get this pulled up. Mine are pretty cool. I'm just going to get off the